and I looked at Twitter earlier this morning, and I saw Michael Irvin trending. I clicked on it with a, <laughs> yep. a you know, with a sweaty palm. Then I found out it was because he was going nuts on first take. Then I turned it on, and I'm like, man, him and Stephen A. was a, was a fun watch. <laughs> and then I had to get Irv on the phone. How are you, Irv? You there? Hey, what's up, man? I'm doing well. How are you, Rick? I'm fine. I know that you. I know just again having hung with you in London last week, and then been with you on game day morning at the meeting. I know that your voice has been uh, a little dicey lately. Uh, are, are you are you okay? Did you survive the uh, the, the first taking today, Irv? Yeah, 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 and, and over there, you know, and, and went over and had some fun because, you know, everybody's here in Dallas waiting on that big game tonight for the Cowboys and, and everything, so it was fun to be over there. Yeah, my voice is feeling, it, it's getting good. Okay. It's getting back to where it needs to be. It's just when I rise up heavy, I just feel it a little bit. But I'm okay now. Because I, you know, we I, I know sometimes how to get a rise out of you. Does Stephen A. too? Because I think he was pushing your buttons, Irv. Absolutely. Whenever you start getting in on my cowboy, because you don't see the path, the path, the path that they're traveling, then I then I got a raise on that. Now you know, and and what what I have to tell people is don't allow Stephen A. and these guys to get you with this. Their selective retention of history. They like to talk about the 20 years of no playoff or, or not much playoff success. But once you go in history, like the people say in courts, you've opened all of the history up. Now you got to talk about the five Super Bowls. You can't just select what history you want to visit and only talk about it. Mm. So what path are they on, Michael? Can you tell me what path are they on? What's the path? Well, right, right. Just what do you mean, Rich? Look, look at it. We got a 23-year-old running back. <laughs> a 24-year-old receiver, and a 25-year-old quarterback. Three main positions. And you got solid at offensive line, and you got a great you – know, defense is playing great football right now. Now, they just got the receiver. So right now, all, you, all you're talking about is putting all of it together. You got all the tools. You got all the tools in your box. Now you just got to pull out the right tools at the right time and use them correctly, and you got something. Well, let me let me channel my inner Stephen A. I don't think I, I don't think I, uh, I I have much of one because he's a unique he's a unique dude. But uh, you don't think the first round choice coughed up for Cooper is preposterous, ludicrous? That you weren't bamboozled oh God, or no. hoodwinked? First round pick, Michael, what, what, for Amari Cooper? Why do we we act like first rounders? Our automatic goal. We act. We because when I say, "Oh, he's first round. He's first round." We act like he's automatic goal. You don't know. You don't know that guy's going to be gold. Look how many first round busts that we have had. So now you're saying put more into a first rounder that you don't know what's going to happen, as opposed to a first rounder that you've seen have success in this league that's still very young. That, 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 so you're not losing anything and giving up a first rounder for Amari Cooper. He is a first rounder, and he's first round young. If you got a guy next year, he's going to be 21, 22 years old. So what do you, you think he's going to look? This guy's two years older than that. What do you think he's, he's going to? What do you think he's going to look like tonight? What should we well, expect? That, that's the key. Now, now, getting acquiring the talent is one thing. Making sure you use it properly and correctly. That's another thing. And now the pressure falls on Scott Lennon here, and the pressure falls on Dak Prescott to, to do something with that talent. It's one thing when you don't have the talent, and they didn't have the talent at wide receiver. But this one player upgrades that whole position because now he's a number one. You got an up and coming number two that hopefully one day can turn into a one in Gallo and, 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 and Michael Gallo. And, and, and you got some nice pieces like Hunter and Beasley to add to that. Now you got a receiving room, a receiver's room that you can work with. Michael Irvin here on the Rich Eisen Show. Before I let you go, Irv, uh, what do you think of Michael Thomas and the cell phone, the homage to Joe Horn with four minutes to go up 10? What do you think of that? Yeah, you know, and, and now, now I, I enjoy creativity, but, but you were playing the Rams, and right there, that could have gotten scary because if the Rams, if, if they complete that one third down, uh, and if we're fourth down, and, and if Cooks doesn't drop that fourth and two, you, you could be talking about an opportunity that you gave them to come back, you know. But I, I'm going to tell you something. That's a kid that we don't mention in the top five, or top, top, the top receivers in this league, and Michael Thomas is certainly one of those guys. I know he had fun last night, and it all worked out. But don't slip on that kid. That's a bad boy playing receiver. No, right I know he is. 
He is, I mean, what he's done is unbelievable. You know, when they traded Cooks, everyone's like, why? What are they doing? He's been remarkable. I, but you're just asking, I mean, why would you give the Rams down 10, a team that's already yeah. come back from 21 down, 15 extra yards after you've just put a dagger in him? And by the way, the smell of burnt toast with Marcus Peters from that kid yesterday was quite something. I mean, why would you do that? Yeah, it, 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 he, he had it set up in his mind, and, and, and he said, I know if I get this opportunity late in the game, I'm going to do it. And he got a great opportunity when he went 70 yards. That was a great opportunity. I understand. Be, be careful there. But he probably thought this game was over. You know, in his mind, he said, I, I saw the interview afterwards. He said, I waited late in the game, and thank God it, it worked out the late in the game. So I, I knew once, once, he, once he was on his way, Rick, there's no way he was not going to do it after he had already put all those wheels into play. But, man, man, and that's another thing you brought up, too, Marcus Peters. Rich, you read a stat the other day that you were talking about. So, oh, they were reading a stat about how many 100-yard games I've had against Hall of Fame, Hall of Famers, you yes. know, and all of that stuff. We were talking about that in meetings. And, and I was thinking about this. The, uh, the shutdown corners that we have now in today's game, it's not like the shutdown corners we had then. Like now, these shutdown corners get benched. They get burned like we saw yesterday. They get benched like Josh Norman. It, it blows my mind. You never heard of Deion Sanders, Daryl Green, and Nia's Wiz, Rod Woodson. You never heard of them guys getting benched or, or getting beat that bad, unless they were playing me, of course. <laughs> but you never heard from anybody else. <laughs> that just blows my mind. All right, Irv, uh, are you are you still with the NFL Network? Because I'm sure ESPN doesn't want to let you out of the building again. I mean, they already let you out of the building once, and you just lit up first <laughs> take. You, you trended. Not many guests on first take trended. Are you still Are you still with us? We still in us? Man, please, Rich. You know what family is. I'm an NFL. NFL all day. That's okay. what I do, buddy. Don't ever worry. I'm never leaving home. Okay. No, I know. I mean, we had a nice moment in the 15th anniversary. I broke down on the set. You came up. You, you kissed me on the head. It was, you know, I mean, I can't, I can't lose you. I can't and, lose you. And I said the truth, Rich. I said the truth. I said it. And I said when we, we were both at the other place, we were just there. But over here, Rich, you are the pioneer. Started it. You were here when they opened the doors, and, and, and we appreciate it. And this thing has grown, and, and you've been there since day one, man. And we love you, and we appreciate you being mm. our, our, our steering wheel and keep driving <laughs> us real well right into that. Love you, Michael Irvin. Oh, do we have uh, Stephen A. on, on his uh, Amari Cooper take? He's just We have been hoodwinked, bamboozled, led astray, run amok, and flat out deceived. There you go. That was him right there. Oh, please. Amari <laughs> <laughs> oh, you, you, Cooper is a nice young talent now. We know that. Okay. It's just can we make sure we use it the right way. All right, Irv, you take care. We'll chat soon. Good job, All as right. always. Here's Michael Irvin. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern on Audience.